hello youtubers welcome to my youtube channel if you're new to this channel kindly hit the subscribe button turn on your notification bell and leave a comment below i subscribe and i'll do well to reply to every comment thank you very much on islands 20 miles west of san francisco sits a series of islands that are so jagged they have earned the moniker the devil's teeth but this may no longer be a name based only in appearance because of the island's potential dangers, humans have been banned from stepping foot on the islands. The waters around the islands are still a popular destination for whale watchers, and because humans can no longer interfere, the Farallons have become home to one of the largest seabird colonies in the United States. Although you can still catch intrepid skin divers sneaking onto the islands, the government adamantly warns anyone that they do so at their own risk. While you might be able to avoid the dozens of great white sharks that roam the area, feeding off the Farallon's large population of elephant seals. The real danger is one you won't be able to punch in the nose. Throughout the middle of the 20th century, were used for the disposal of radioactive materials. There are almost 50,000 drums full of nuclear waste throughout the area. And with numbers that high, leaks are an inevitable certainty. Number 11. Reunion Island. West of the African island of Madagascar, in the Indian Ocean, sits Reunion Island, a small yet busy island that is covered by rainforests, rivers, and breathtaking waterfalls. Though it is over 5,500 miles away from France, the island is still governed by French law, and because it is less of a hassle than traveling to island destinations where passports may be required, it has become a popular vacation destination for French citizens. Because of this, the island is one of the most modern islands in terms of sanitation and transportation. It could be easy to get carried away daydreaming about visiting Reunion because of its beautiful villages and relative isolation from the outside world. But tourists must be prepared for the terrifying realities of this pristine locale. First off, it is home to one of the most active volcanoes in all of the world, which was a popular hiking destination for tourists until it was deemed too dangerous to traverse. The island also has the distinction of being one of the leading islands in terms of annual rainfall in the entire world, and is often the victim of violent tropical cyclones. Lastly, Reunion is known for having one of the largest and most vicious populations of sharks encircling it. The shark attacks have become so bad that the French government has forbidden surfing around the island. Despite this, there are still around half a dozen people who meet their demise every year from shark attacks. Number 10. Danger Island. South of Maldives, in the western part of the Indian Ocean, lies the Chagos Archipelago, a series of coral islands long inhabited by the Chagos people. One of the smallest of these atolls is Danger Island, which is full of coconut trees that used to act as reserve by the Chagos in the event food supplies ran short. The island is full of wildlife. Most significantly, it is the home of two rare birds with fun names to say, brown noddies and red-footed boobies. The island isn't actually as dangerous to modern-day adventurers as its name suggests. The name is merely a holdover from ye olden times, as when it was first mapped in the 19th century, seafarers found the coral reef and rocky shoals that surrounded it too treacherous to anchor their ships. Even with modern transportation, the island is incredibly difficult to get to and navigate without risking damage. If you were to end up grounded or wrecked in your danger island, you would find yourself utterly isolated from the world and would be especially in trouble if you were allergic to coconuts. Number 9. Tristan da Cunha. Almost 1,800 miles of South Africa is the British territory known as Tristan da Cunha. Visiting this grassy circle-shaped island that measures only 8 miles across can be incredibly daunting, as the only way to reach it is by traveling 7 days by boat. Because of this, it once had the distinction of being the most isolated, yet still inhabited place on Earth. That was, until the volcano that formed the island had enough of being host to humans and erupted in 1961, causing widespread devastation. Luckily, because there were only a few inhabitants to begin with on Tristan Acuna, the British were able to successfully relocate everyone to England before they could be wiped out. Slowly, people have returned, the island is now home to 270 locals who live life off the grid and farm to make ends meet, all the while trying to forget that the volcano may evict them at a moment's notice. Number 8. Bikini Atoll. The Marshall Islands are a series of atolls and islands that lie east of Guam, 
in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The most famous of these islands is that of Bikini Atoll, which, although small, helped shape history, along the way becoming synonymous with the two-piece bathing suit and the atomic bomb. What was once a beautiful tropical locale is now a radioactive wasteland, as Bikini Atoll was one of the main sites at which the United States military tested nuclear weapons. Though the island had a small indigenous population, they were all relocated to a nearby island in 1946, before testing commenced. The island has remained abandoned to this day, aside from researchers studying the effects of radioactivity. Number seven, Hashima Island. If you head out to sea, traveling west from Nagasaki, Japan, you will come across what appears to be a floating fortress. This is the island of Hashima, aptly known by the nickname Battleship Island. Hashima was once one of the main sources of fuel for the Japanese military during World War II. The island was home to a coal mine, and because of the sheer amount of workers, the majority of which being Korean and Chinese POWs and enslaved civilians, it was at one point the most densely populated place on Earth. However, a few years after the war, the Japanese eschewed coal for oil, and the mine was abandoned. Because there is no one to manage the giant housing buildings, and other complexes, they have fallen into severe disrepair, and nature is slowly taking back the island. This has made the island extremely dangerous to traverse, as the buildings and seawalls built to hold back vicious tsunami waves are crumbling all around. It is also believed that there may be unrecovered naval mines in the surrounding water. Number six, Bear Island. Between the Arctic island of Svalbard and mainland Norway lies Bear Island. The island, with an area just over 110 square miles, was once considered a vital position for naval reconnaissance, but now only hosts little more than a weather station and a few abandoned houses. The entire island has been declared a nature reserve by the Norwegian government, but there really isn't much nature to find, as it is largely devoid of plant and animal life, aside from moss, seabirds, and fish. It is believed that much of this is due to toxic contaminants that have found their way to the island via air currents that waft pollution from industrial countries like the United States and England, which border the Atlantic. But the true danger of Bear Island comes from another form of pollution. In 1989, a Soviet nuclear submarine crashed just south of the island, resulting in much of the water surrounding the island having been possibly contaminated with radioactive waste. Then, in 2009, a Russian transport carrying upwards of 15,000 gallons of oil rammed into the island becoming lodged. Much of the oil leaked into the sea, causing large numbers of the island's seabird population to perish, and only adding to the man-made destruction haunting the island. The pollution, combined with the desert-like terrain which averages nearly zero inches of rainfall a year, and the steep, sharp cliffs that make up Bear Island, makes this one place you can cross off your list of potential vacation destinations. Number five. Saba. If you are willing to brave the rocky but short 12-minute plane ride from St. Martin to Saba, the smallest island in the Dutch Antilles, you will be graced with a view like none other, a place that looks trapped in the ancient past. Upon arrival, you will find a village nestled upon a volcano that is full of vibrant atmosphere with live music, family-owned restaurants featuring fresh-caught cuisine, and plenty of outdoor activities like scuba diving and hiking. But all this comes at a cost. One might say that the locals have become such experts at having a good time because they know at any moment it could all be destroyed. Tourists have been known to call it the unspoiled queen of the Caribbean, but it could be more accurately described as Hurricane Island. Because of its location right in the Atlantic's Hurricane Alley, the island has been noted for being hit by the most hurricanes of any island on Earth. Despite the constant attacks that Mother Nature brings down upon Saba, its people still find a way to survive and rebuild time and time again. Number four. Rockall. The tiny 80-foot wide island known as Rockall, which lies nearly 300 miles off of Scotland's western shore, has such an imposing presence, it has made its way into Irish and Scottish legends, as well as popular culture through music, books, and television. People have long been entranced with its simple yet powerful structure, with some ancient myths going as far to name it the location where the apocalypse will begin. The real life danger is in the fact that the island itself is essentially a large granite rock sticking out of the ocean, the remnants of an extinct volcano. Because of its steep incline on all sides, there is really only one place for a person to stand, the peak. 
which you can only get to if you are a skilled rock climber. And even if you are, it isn't recommended that you try climbing the relatively short summit of 65 feet, as the island is smack dab in the part of the ocean, which boasts waves reaching upwards of 100 feet. Despite there being no natural value to the island, other than its looks, Rockall was considered an extremely important strategic location by the United Kingdom, who claimed the island in fear of it falling into the hands of the USSR and being used to house a missile silo. Britain's claim to the island also has the historical distinction of being their last modern-day territorial acquisition. Number 3. Grunard Island Grunard Island is another one of Scotland's treacherous isles, but it owes its place on our list for a man-made danger. This hauntingly bleak-looking island was once home to some of the most extreme biological weapons testing of the 20th century. The British Army peppered and doused the islands hundreds of times with weapons like chlorine gas and anthrax. The anthrax in particular had a permanent effect on Gruner as it soured the soil and decimated the entire indigenous animal population. The island remains a wasteland and only sanctioned government researchers are allowed to visit it and they must wear hazmat suits from the moment they step on the island until they leave. Any attempt by non-military personnel to land on the island is strictly prohibited, and even if it wasn't, you probably shouldn't go there anyway, as you wouldn't survive very long. Number two. Miyake-jima. The Izu Island chain that juts from Japan's southeastern coast is made up of a string of volcanoes, all of which are currently active. In the last century alone, Nearly 200 people have perished due to major eruptions. The most major of these was in 2000, when Mount Oyama, the biggest volcano on the island of Mayakajima, blew its top, Oyama, which looms over several small villages, occupied by a few thousand people, spewed lava and lethal amounts of sulfuric gas upon the island for four straight years. While some decided to pack up and move, the vast majority of the population stayed. Up until 2005, much of the island was restricted, and the people of Miyakajima were forced to stay inside with their doors sealed, only traveling outside in their gas masks if absolutely necessary. Nowadays, the people have returned to work and adapted to life next to this fiery giant by closely monitoring the gas levels and keeping gas masks handy in case the levels become excessive. Tourists are even welcomed now as commercial flights were allowed to start back up in 2008. But if you do visit, you better come prepared and expect to feel like you are on another much more dangerous planet. Number one. Ramri Island. Just off the coast of Myanmar, in the Indian Ocean, is Ramri Island. At a distance, the island looks like the perfect place for a relaxing vacation. But if you were to travel inland, you'd most likely have an experience akin to a Jurassic nightmare and probably end up in the belly of one of the world's oldest surviving species. Ramri is unique because it is home to the largest consolidated bask of saltwater crocodiles. In World War II, after being defeated by the British in a battle on the island, the Japanese army retreated through Ramri's swamplands and over 400 soldiers were gobbled up by the nasty crocs. To this day, the onslaught that the Japanese faced in the form of these 2,000-pound reptiles remains the event with the largest loss of human life due to animals. If you had to choose one of these islands for your next vacation, which one would you choose? 